What's up everyone, welcome back to more Act 5 action from MGS4. Finally, we are on board the Ark, and it's time to make our way down towards GW. But as you guys are fully aware, there's still things that we have to deal with. But first, let me show you something for a trophy that you might be after. Alright, basically, there is a gun here known as the Tanegashima. And as you can see, it's worth 500,000 Drebin points, which is a stupid amount for your first playthrough. So you're probably not going to be able to get it the first time. But uh, you need that gun in order to get a trophy. Hopefully I'll be able to find. Basically all you have to do is buy the gun, and I think there's something like a 33% chance of it triggering a, uh, a kind of storm-type thing, tornado kind of thing. And when that happens, I think you get rid of all the people nearby, and they will drop their items as well. Where the hell is this trophy? Yeah, Divine Wind. Yeah, so it's 33% chance of doing that. And uh, it's 50% off it during Act 5. So if you are going to get it, Act 5 is a good time to do it. Okay, I think that's all. Let me get prepared. I don't think I really need anything other than the MK to, to get to the next boss. And, uh, well, we've beaten all the other B&Bs. We just need to take down Screaming Mantis, which is going to be... Good job, Snake. You made it on board. Welcome to Haven. Enemy units are already on their way. I guess I should call... Break through their defenses and find GW server. I guess I should call this thing Haven instead of the Ark, because that just kind of sounds biblical. All right, let's go. This bit shouldn't be too bad. I kind of just tend to stick down the right-hand side and just... Um, Obviously, once you played it once or twice, you know where the where the frogs are going to come from, so it's not a big deal. And obviously, I've I've discovered my new kind of MKing the the geckos in the legs trick, which has just worked wonders so far. I'll probably put it into use again. So I'm going to end this game in true uh, Dan's Go Eight style with the uh, MK action. So in terms of gameplay to cutscene ratio, Act 5 is probably the one with the least gameplay to the most cutscenes, which is good for me. Might not be good for you if you've seen the cutscenes a lot of times, but there's not much I can do about that. Because literally there's about 15 minutes, maximum 20 minutes of stuff to do, and compared to that 15-20 minutes, it's like 90 minutes of cutscenes. So this is literally the last kind of bit of sneaking slash infiltration I'm going to be doing, and then that is literally it. From then on, it's a couple of boss battles, and then it's all over. So, the, almost at the end. Should be, should be one on the left here. They're going to kind of creep up slowly. Come on. There you are. Shit. No. Okay. Did not want to alert there. It's the first time since I did my big boss run like two and a half years ago that I managed to get through this game without alerts. So that's going to be good for me. There's going to be another gecko coming down, I think. Yeah. There he is. Let me wait for his friend to turn around. Yay! Cheap tactics. Yes, sir. Oh, triangle button mashing. They're kind of uh, preparing you for a scene that's going to appear later on. Alright, so we made it to this bit, and then this is literally the final bit before we come across the final B&B core member. Let's do this. Oh, you've got a, got a little flashback first, I think. Or not. Oh, yes, we do. The corridor leading to the depth is defended by direct energy weapons that emit certain types of microwaves. Did you say, did you say microwaves? The waves start to evaporate in the center of the corridor. Sounds like the perfect job for me. Yep. So, that microwave corridor is going to be seriously killer when we get there. But first, a little bit of cutscenes and then air swapping time. into the command center. There should be a few little items around here. Probably don't need most of them, but what the hell. Let's get them. I'm trying to squeeze out every last bit of gameplay I can before the cutscenes start rolling in.
Now as much as I'd like to kind of do a realistic kind of uh, M4 show for you here and just kind of take out all of them. That is not what I'm going to be doing because uh, the frogs take quite a few hits to kill and with the M4 you're just going to be wasting your time. So what do you do? You run away like a little girl. Because what do you notice? Meryl doesn't actually have a life bar. So Meryl isn't actually in any kind of danger so you can just kind of leave her lying there and the frogs aren't going to do anything. So you kind of back yourself into a corner here, but you've got plenty of time to react to any of the frogs that want to come down here. So this is particularly useful if you're kind of doing big boss extreme type stuff or you know you don't want to get any kills or you don't want to get damage, that type of thing. I think if you stay here long enough and you're careful with those grenades and you run forward at the right time, then there's no reason why you shouldn't get through this bit completely undamaged. And obviously because we're on normal we've got plenty of equipment, like stun grenades as well, so might as well make use of them, it's not like we're going to get another chance, so just go for it. Another grenade. Cheeky bastards. So yeah, they come in waves in this uh, in this section, and I guess either you can, can just be a badass and try, try and take them out with the M4, but I've never had much luck doing that, I get hit quite often. And it's just, it's very messy. And this is much more kind of clean and cowardly, which is just the way I like it when it comes to MGS. Not much of a gunslinger. It can be annoying when there's like one left and they refuse to come down this little corridor, then you might just have to just kind of come out and get them. Yeah, there is one left. I mean, if it's one, you're not exactly going to get hit very much, so. <laughs> they don't even know where I am. Oh, come on. That was, that was a fail. And that's exactly why I'm not trying to take them all out with the M4. Okay, so once wave 1 is over, the next wave, they're all on the second tier. So that kind of makes them easier. They, they, they're they not very accurate with their shooting, so... I'm a little bit more accurate than they are, so that's good. I can't bother to use the most in a gun. I just might as well keep going like this. Done. Let's continue. Come on, come on. Honestly, it's a little bit silly. If Meryl had a life gauge here and you genuinely had to protect her, then this bit would be a lot more difficult. But since she doesn't have a life bar, no one really gives a shit, so we can just do as we please. So it's funny how Meryl's in here and the next boss is going to be effectively a modern day Psycho Mantis. So, well when I say modern day it's not like MGS, MGS1 was old in terms of the timeline but it's kind of like a next gen Psycho Mantis so it's all coming back to MGS1 where she kind of gets controlled and you can bet your bottom dollar that's going to happen again. Alright, final wave. Shit. <laughs> As you can see, it's just a stream of frogs that are just getting taken out. And I've only I've only taken a, a tiny bit of damage, which I shouldn't even have taken really, if I was playing properly. But I'm kind of trying to rush through as best as I can because uh, I'm kind of highly expectant for rising, hoping that it will hoping that it was, it's going to arrive early as I planned. And uh, if it does arrive early and I manage to upload it, then I'll explain in the actual video how I managed to get it early. Because if it works out, if it works out the way I wanted to, I'll get it about a week before the UK release, and uh, yeah, that should be cool and get me quite a few views. Which, uh, as much as I'd love to say I'm doing it purely for enjoyment, I really need the views because I don't. I mean, the only time I'm, I, the only reason I'm dedicating time to this is so I can kind of boost my number of videos and views and try and earn as much money as I can from this stuff. Because it's either this or finding other part-time work or work so I'm doing it for you guys but I'm also doing it for myself so hopefully rising works out well where is this where are you there you are what are you doing all the way there awesome all right I think we're done here time for the boss well, not the boss but the next boss
Snake! Run! <laughs> I know your wavelength. It brings back memories. It can't be. Okay, so we have dolls, mind control, resurrection, puppetry, it's all here. Alright, so if you, if you notice Johnny, he didn't get affected. Why do you think that is? Mm, he didn't get affected by anything that affects nanomachines, so let's suppress those nanomachines and break free. There you go, you can see those strings kind of fall away. Alright, let me take out Meryl, because Meryl's a danger to herself in the state and a danger to me as well. Oh shit, I didn't actually knock her out. Let me uh, take her down. Yeah, just completely deplete her stamina gauge, that's the best way to go. So yeah, if you don't if you don't use the syringe... If you don't use the syringe, then uh, you're not going to be able to hit Psycho... Well, not Psycho, Screaming Mantis. So you need to be careful. Alright, so as you can see, Meryl got straight back up from that. So I guess kind of taking her out is not the best idea. For this section anyway. Now, what you got to do... There's no point trying to hit her body, because that's just useless. What we need to do is get control of those dolls. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing since it's a stamina kill, I'm going to go for the, the stamina doll first. Might be making a mistake here, but hopefully I don't drag this out too much. This sh oh, shit. Since Meryl has some big-ass guns, they, they do cause a bit of damage. Especially if you're playing, um, especially if you're playing on, like, Big Boss Extreme Mode type thing. Is that the sorrow? Yeah, that is the sorrow. Makes sense. Yeah, you do not want to get in the way of that gun in Big Boss Extreme. Alright, let me just take you down. Oh, shit. And she's pretty quick as well. I mean, she, she fires those shots pretty fast. Doesn't give you much time. So that's four shots I've landed on it. I think it takes five shots at this stage anyway to knock it down. So then all we've got to do is uh, knock the doll down, grab it, and give her a taste of her own medicine. So now you need to hurry because she's going to blow her brains out. Again, all kind of uh, brings back memories of MGS1. Luckily she gives you a lot of time here. 
It's quite funny though, uh, if you don't reach her in time, she kind of shoots herself in the head with a Desert Eagle and somehow it only takes about a quarter of her health away. So, that's quite funny. Okay. Meryl is safe once again. Come on, just give me that doll. Oh, shit. Just give me the doll. Damn it. Come on, come on. There it, there it goes. Okay. Shit. Alright. I am way ahead of you, as usual. Okay. Shit. Obviously, when you take the doll, she kind of wants to club the shit out of you, so you need to be careful. Alright, so let's equip the doll and use it. Hopefully this works. I don't think I've used the blue doll before. I always go for the red one. Alright, let's see. So all you've got to do is just fire, the, fire it at her and then you can take her down. Or not. Or not. What do you mean? How is that not working? I think I've overlooked something here. Oh, shit. Why? What, can you, can you not use the blue doll here? Well, that kind of renders this a bit pointless, isn't it? Oh, shit. I've got to avoid these. So does that mean the blue doll only only helps for, like, your next playthrough? It doesn't serve me any purpose in this boss battle. That's a bit stupid. Surely that should be that should be a stamina kill. Yeah, that's definitely not working. Okay. I'm going to have to figure this out. Stupid bitch. Maybe it's just the red doll. Maybe I can't stamina kill her. Crazy bitch, man. That is weird. That is really weird. So, it looks like I'm going to have to do the same thing again and get the second doll. Which hasn't been too difficult at the moment. Okay. Shit. Hmm. Well, if this doesn't work as well, then I am seriously missing something. I can't be that stupid, surely. It's weird. I have both dolls now. Maybe you need both dolls for this one to work or something. I don't know. I really don't remember this too well. This is just ridiculous. This doll is totally useless then. Ugh. Shit, I'm going to have to figure this out. Alright, I guess that's what you get when you don't play this game for a while. And you don't do a, a kind of a proper job of it. Basically, it turns out that you need to use the red doll and... I completely forgot, if only I checked my own video on this before, it takes away both her stamina gauge and her normal gauge. Which doesn't really make much sense to be honest, you should, it should be the case that you can use a blue doll to take her stamina away, but whatever. So that was a waste of time, this boss battle would have been over by now. Okay, let's take you down bitch. So yeah, if you're doing this just go for the red one unless you really want the blue doll. And she's dead. 